on the great epic that is the life story of Sadar Vallabhai Patel, Phyllis has now been written. It is a tale of heroic endeavor and of incredible triumph. The secret of Sardar Patel's strength was his solicitude for the masses. He was their guide, philosopher and friend. They loved, admired and trusted him because he lived and labored for them. Derived from the toiling millions, he always belonged to them. Sardar Patel discovered himself through his leader and master, Mahatma Gandhi. There was a unique comradeship between the two. A comradeship that was strengthened and sanctified by their dedicated service to the nation. The death of Gandhiji was an irreparable personal loss to Vallabhbhai. To him, Gandhiji was everything. Friend, leader and mentor. The Sadar lived to propagate his master's message of unity, discipline and world peace. The Sadar was a stern man, but tender-hearted. A jewel of great price was enclosed in a chest made of iron. Vallabhai suffered no fools, but he sincerely loved his fellow men. He felt refreshed and rejuvenated in the company of bright-faced children. He was incredibly sensitive to the charms of nature. He loved animals as only a peasant could love. The strong man of India was a great exponent of bodily vigor and strength. He looked forward to India's glory on her playfields. Be strong and serve the nation with all your might. That was the veteran's message to the youth of the country. The Sadar was the patron of the nation's manhood. Though ailing and preoccupied, he constantly attended sports and parades to give impetus to the nation's manly activities. A front rank political leader, Sardar Patel was also an astute negotiator. In the critical years preceding India's independence, he played a notable part on behalf of the Congress. His profound grasp of practical politics was of inestimable value both to his colleagues and to the British cabinet mission. He was a great champion of India's unity, but he was never dogmatic in politics. A shrewd and sagacious statesman, he accepted realities without hesitation. Sardar Patel was a prominent architect of Free India's democratic constitution. He was a loyal colleague of the Prime Minister. We welcome you, sir, as our leader, as the head of the Republic of India, and as a comrade who has faced without flinching all the crises and troubles that have confronted this country during the past generation. May I, sir, pledge my loyalty and fealty to this republic of which you will be the honored head. I endorse every word that has fallen from the lips of the Honorable the Prime Minister and I beg to congratulate you on the great honor that has been conferred on you. Sardar Patel affixes his signature to the new constitution. He firmly believed in the rule of law. Sardar Patel's contribution to the internal stability of free India was monumental. He broke the idea of the services as a ruling class. But he was also a tower of strength to them. The Indian Administrative Service replaced the ICS. Both in Parliament and elsewhere, he vigorously championed the cause of the services. He brushed aside all wild allegations against their integrity. Sardar Patel's interest and solicitude extended to all branches of the services. He laid great emphasis on the efficiency and smartness of the police. He was never tired of reminding them that first and last they were servants of the people. He presided over military parades and infused his own dynamism into young cadets. The Navy was as dear to him as the Army. Officers and men of INS Delhi felt themselves honored when he took a cruise on board the flagship.
he showed deep interest in their naval maneuvers. Nor were members of the Indian Air Force, the infant arm of the National Defense Services, forgotten. The strong man of India was a tireless champion of her defenders. The crowning achievement of Sadar Vallabhbhai Patel was the redrawing of India's political map. His policy of unification and democratization of the states marked the culmination of his glorious service to the nation. He achieved the country's political stability by hasting the dissolution of the 500 odd principalities. In memorable language, he appealed to the princes to accept the realities of the situation. He pleaded for friendliness and cooperation in a joint endeavor inspired by common allegiance to our motherland for the common good of us all. The statesman reminded the rulers that it was far better for us to make laws sitting together as friends than to make treaties as aliens. An appeal so earnestly addressed struck home. The prince's response was prompt and praiseworthy. India and the world watched with admiration the rapidity with which these old political fortresses were demolished. Self-respect, patriotism and manhood were restored to the princes. The people of the so-called Indian India were redeemed from the vagaries of one-man rule. The blessings of democracy were now extended to all corners of the country. The work of a century was accomplished in a couple of years. The Sadar made history and won a unique place in it. Sadar Patel spoke straight to the hearts of the people. In the critical times through which the country is passing, I appeal to every citizen to make his maximum contribution to the solution of our problems. The ultimate sanction of government is popular support. Our broad requirements are settled and clear. We must have unity and strength. A strong center, a well-equipped modern army, economic contentment and stability, a disciplined and responsible citizenship, and a firm administrative fabric are the essential requisites, as well as expression of that unity and strength. The great traveler has now reached journey's end. India's titan, the man who was always bigger than his undertaking, has passed away. The Sadar, who began his career with the humble peasants of Gujarat, has ended his earthly sojourn as a matchless builder of the nation. He made the Congress organization the logical successor to the British administration. He saved the country from the peril of chaos and gave it a stability that will endure. The Sardar is gone, but his memory will always be enshrined in the hearts of his countrymen. Tributes to a man of Sardar Vallabhai Patel's stature cannot be adequate, but let us say with a poet, he dreamt not of a perishable home who thus could build.